we're skipping 12 and we're doing 13. So we'll be all caught up and ready to start our new books next week. So anybody have a special request very quickly that you want us to pray for? All right, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day, a beautiful day to come to your house. Lord, I pray that you would have me say only what needs to be said today, that you would anoint your word as you always do to go forth and bless people and feed their spirits, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for letting the pastor come home this week. Pray that you would continue to be with Kay and Pastor and Kenneth as they all are recovering. And I pray, Lord, that they will be back in your house very quickly. And Lord, I pray for these requests today. I pray for Jesse, that they would find out what was causing the problems and be able to uh, give her what she needs to get her back on her feet. And Lord, I pray that you would touch David's mom as she's in rehab. Help her to work through her physical problems and be strengthened and be able to come back home. And Lord, I pray that you touch my sister Kay and that you would be with her as she goes through the process of um, this disease, regression. I pray, Lord, that she would uh, it would be a quick remission, a quick way to remission. And Lord, I pray that you would anoint in the services today, here and across the world, as people gather to worship you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the first thing we got is, what is love? Okay? That's a big question. This is a giant subject. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to watch this little video. It can actually be 
So why are we doing the things that we do? Is it really loving to do it, whatever this is? So you can define what the it is. Say you think of, you're going to go to work at the soup kitchen, or you're going to get some clothes together to give to somebody that doesn't have them. But sometimes there's a voice inside you that's saying some of these things, and I want you to think about them, and I want you to ask yourself this question, is this loving? Okay? So that's going to be the, the question, is it love? Okay? So say you do something for somebody, and inside you you're thinking, okay, I did this for them today, and next week when I need something done for me, they'll feel obligated to do something for me. Is that love? How about if it's the other way around? You say, last week they did A, B, C, so I'll do this for them, and then we're even. No. How about if you say, if I don't do this, people will think I'm awful. How about if I do this, people will like me or they'll love me? What about if I do this, people will think I'm a good person? Okay. What about I'm doing this because my parents and the Bible said to do it? Is it loving? How about I'm doing this because everybody else is. Everybody's joining in this party to do this. and Is it loving? How about, and this is a big one that a lot of people have, if I don't do this, I'll be rejected. So is it love? How about this one? If I do this, my parents, my spouse, my children will be so proud of me. How about if I do this, well, I'm going to do this today because it makes me happy. Is it love? What about, well, I've got to do this because I'm the only one to do it. Nobody else will. Somebody's got it. Is it love? And what about this last one that I think a lot of people do? If I do this, I won't feel guilty. Is it love? So, so then, we have to think about what is love. So again, Christian love is different. It's different than the world because all of those reasons are the reasons people do things. And they think that they're being loving when they do those things. So let's go to Matthew chapter 22. We're going to read verses 36 to 40. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So somebody wanted to know the greatest commandment. And this is what Jesus told them was the greatest commandment. So we are to start Christian love with God. Him first. And how did it say we are supposed to love Him? How? With all our heart, our soul, and our mind. We're going to go and look at a couple of the things on your sheet today. Your sheet is green, mine is orange. We're going to read a couple of these scriptures. We're going to read Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. So this was way before Jesus' time. In fact, this is probably where he was quoting from when he was talking to those religious leaders. 
Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hands, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. So they went, they didn't just say, just remember them. They wrote them on the doorpost. So every time they walked into a room or a house, they could see the scripture of God. So they could be reminded to love God. You know, we see pictures of the priests who wore the phylactery, which had scripture on their forehead or on their wrist to remind them of what their obligation was to love God. So on your sheet, you're supposed to list if this is scriptures about loving God, your neighbor, or both. So that was God. So we're going to read another one. We're going to go to Micah chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Love for God. We're, 
we should be willing to give up our very life. Now that may not mean go and die. <clears throat> that may mean devote your life to something that he would want you to do. But it could mean giving up your life. People in other countries have had to do that. We have been so privileged in this country not to have to do that, but we never know what the future may hold. And then the last one was with all thy mind. To submit the intellect to his will. To love his law and gospel more than we do the decisions of our own minds. To be willing to submit all our faculties to his teaching and guidance. And to devote to him all our intellectual attainments and all the results of our intellectual efforts. To me, what that says is our control. You know, it's so easy to say, well, I want to take care of my life. I want to go this way, this way, this way. I want to be in control. And I do. You know. But we have to give that control over to God. There may be something He wants to lead us in a different direction. And we have to be open to letting Him control our lives instead of us controlling our lives. So that is, we've got to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. So, now let's go to Romans, chapter 13. We're going to read verses 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Wow. Love is the fulfillment of the law as we love our neighbors as ourselves. So, then, how do we love ourselves? I want to think about that for a minute. All of you look really nice today. You loved yourself. You groomed yourself. You probably took a bath or shower. You got your clothes. You fixed your hair. You drove carefully to get here. You may have had breakfast. You fed yourself. You're taking care of a spiritual need by coming to church. You're, you should be taking care of your emotional needs. So those are the ways that we take care of ourselves. We love ourselves. And I don't think we're supposed to not love ourselves. We should love ourselves. We should do those things. But the scripture goes further than that. Love yourself, but love your neighbor just the way you love yourself. So would you go to that much effort to get your neighbor to church or your friend to church or somebody else to church? Um, my sister that is with my mom today, she, every Sunday she helps my mom get dressed and takes her to church. And when someone is my mom's age and in the health of my mom is, it's a big deal to get them ready, to help them pick out their clothes and get dressed and get to the car and get out and get in. But she is showing God's love to my mom by helping her get to church. So are we willing to love other people enough just like we love ourselves? to do these things, to help them come into the kingdom. And that's the most important thing because after all, we're really talking about spiritual things here today in our what is love. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that is one point that, that came up to me several years ago. I've always been shy and I've always felt like you weren't supposed to care about yourself. And I heard a preacher preach on that one time and it says, love your neighbor as yourself. They said, how can you love your neighbor if you don't love yourself? So that taught me a real lesson 
in my lifetime that I had to learn to love myself too. So. Right. And how are you going to know how to treat other people if you don't know how to treat yourself? You know, if you don't know how to take care of your needs, but then you project that to other people and help take care of their needs. Okay, let's go on to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again. We're going to read verses 4 through 7. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now that's the New King James Version. You have a little blue card on the table. And this is the New International Version of these same scriptures we just read. And I want to read them because actually, I think this version gives you a better uh, understanding of some of the phrases. So let's read this one. And I'm going to pause after certain ones. The first one is love is patient. How many people need to have more patience? In this world, oh my goodness, everybody's in a hurry. You know, I drive up the highway, and I'm one of those people. Sorry, I drive the speed limit. And everybody wants to run over me. And I wonder where they're in in such a hurry to get to. And then you get in a line somewhere, and everybody wants to just push you forward and push you. But we're, we're to be patient. And you know, it may not just be patient with other people. Sometimes, like when we're talking about loving yourself, sometimes you have to be patient with yourself. I have found myself sometimes saying, oh, I wish I could just get this. I wish I could just do this. I want it today. So sometimes you have to be patient with yourself. Love is kind. You know, we think we know what kindness is. I was looking up again about, you know, what kindness is. One of the things they said was kindness is contagious. And it really sort of is. If I'm nice to somebody, it puts them in a better mood and they're more likely to be nice to somebody else. So it's sort of contagious. Kindness helps create identity. And it's like this person says, it's like giving up your seat on the bus for a stranger or invite somebody who's struggling to dinner. Kindness makes the giver feel good as well as the beneficiary. Most of us want to think of ourselves as kind, so acting in that way reinforces the identity of kindness. And then empathy is a part of being kind. You know, you see someone struggling and even if you can't have sympathy, if you've never gone through it, you can listen to them and you can try to understand where they are, where they're coming from. And kindness is attractive. And this was, was really interesting. It said in a 1980 study of 10,047 people were asked to rank preferences in a potential mate. Kindness ranked above physical attractiveness. I'm surprised about that. You know, because people say, well, the first thing I saw was he was tall, had some, you know, whatever. But this says most of those people, they would rather have someone kind. And being kind creates a connection between you and someone else. Okay, he says it does not envy. I have to admit that there are times I've had a problem with being envious of someone because maybe they had something that I would like to have or they've achieved something I would like to achieve. So we have to ask for forgiveness. We're not supposed to envy. God gives us all talents and we're, we're supposed to pursue the talents that he's given us. We might not have the same talent somebody else has. So we shouldn't be envious of those things. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude does not boast. So have you ever met people that if they do the least little thing they want to tell 15 people they did it? Yeah. 
you know, they're not happy to do it. it you know, they want everybody to know. They're very proud of their self. And then you've met people who are rude. They will push you out of the way to get where they're going. Or step on you if you're in the corporate world to get up to the next rung. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily anger. And that's what a lot of people have to work on. Their, their fuses are very short. And I love this one in this version of the Bible. Instead of saying thinks no evil like the New King James, it says it keeps no record of wrongs. Can you imagine in some people's mind the notebook of things that they have on somebody? Well, 50 years ago they did this and they said that and I'm holding this against them. But the Bible says don't keep a record of the wrongs. We should forgive. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hugs, always perseveres. So, let's go on in our scripture. I don't want to run out of time. Chapter 13, we're going to read the rest of the chapter. Verse 8. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in the mirror dimly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And now abide in faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Okay. So, I love one of the things that the quarterly says. In talking about 1 Corinthians 13, 11, through 13. It says love is permanent, so love will last for eternity. And we know that the Bible says God is love. So no wonder love is complicated. God is love. But love will be is permanent. It's forever. And then love is complete. This scripture tells us that we can only see part of things right now. We can only see part of the uh, great things that God has for us. We can only see part of his plan for us. You know, what we need to know today, we can only see part of the fulfillment of the scripture. But someday, we're going to see it all. Someday, we're going to know all of what love really means. We think we know now, but then we're going to be able to see what the great sacrifice really was that Jesus made. We can only see a little bit of that love now. And then the last one, it says, love is supreme. As great as faith and hope are, love is still greater. One day, faith will give way to sight, and hope will give way to fulfillment, but love will remain. And I like that because it, this tells us, it says, and now about a faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So one day, we won't need faith anymore. Because we'll be able to see things. We'll be there in heaven. We'll be able to see all that's going on. We'll be able to see how God's plan worked out in our lives where we can't see now. We won't need faith anymore. And then it says sight will give way and hope will give way to fulfillment. So all of those things, all the promises one day will be fulfilled. Not just the ones that he gave to Abraham and Isaac, but the ones that he gives to us. They'll all be fulfilled one day. But love, love will continue on. There's no end to love. So, I have one small demonstration for you about God's love and then our love for other people. So, if we say that this class 
is someone else. And this shaving cream is love. Okay? So, I have to pour out my love into other people. Okay? So, this shaving cream, we notice that something amazing about shaving cream is that as it comes out, it expands. You know, we, if I keep doing this and keep going, this love will overflow this glass. So if we keep giving out God's love, it will overflow from us to other people. But look at how big it's getting. It came from this little can, and look how big it is. So love grows. Love expands. Also, the purpose for shaving cream is you put it on and it makes things easier. makes it easier to shave. So love makes things easier. It makes relationships easier. It softens those hard parts. And so we will we, just remember shaving cream. And every, every time you shave your legs or your, your beard, remember that you need to send your love out and it will grow and it will multiply and it will make the way uh, smoother. Okay, it, it's almost time to go, and so we're going to have a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us, for your wonderful sacrifice, for not leaving us in our sins, for reaching out to us, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for being willing to come to give your life up for us, to show the ultimate love. Lord, I pray that you would anoint in the coming service. Not Barry and everyone who's singing and taking a part in the service, that you will be glorified, dear Lord, by our worship.